Hi guys, if you've wondered what this liqueur is with the artichoke on the bottle, you need to keep watching because today I'm going to talk about Chinna. Hey guys, so when I first started bartending, for many years there when I would go into the store to buy my spirits and booze, I would see this bottle and I always wondered what the hell it was with that artichoke on it. It's a bitter Italian liqueur that's in the family of Amaro's, 16.5% alcohol, and it is flavoured with 13 different herbs and botanicals including artichoke leaves. But let's get one thing straight here. It does not taste like artichoke. And I think that's what probably turned me off the first few times. And when I got to try it for the first time, it was like, holy shit, why did I not drink this way sooner? Now in my cocktail bars, the 18th Amendment bars in Geelong and Ballarat and also Manhattan bar, Chino sits up there on the same shelf with Jägermeister, Averna, Ferne Branca, uh, and all those other sort of bitter digestives. Traditionally served on its own as an aperitif, it's also really popular with orange juice, tonic water, and soda water. I personally don't drink it so much as an aperitif, which is a drink that you would drink that's bitter to start getting your digestive juices happening to prepare you for a meal. I prefer it as a digestive because I believe that the bitterness there definitely helps settle your stomach after you've had something heavy to eat, like a large meal. Uh, and for me, a lot of times, if I've had too much and I want to keep drinking later on, Chino is one of those shots that I love doing. Chill down, shoot it back, and after about half an hour, stomach feels great and I'm ready to keep drinking again. What I love about Chino too is it's really versatile and it substitutes for a lot of those other bitter style liqueurs that we use in a lot of classic cocktails. So let's give it a taste. So it's a very dark colour there, kind of looks like a Coca-Cola syrup of all things, but uh, obviously doesn't taste like that. So on the nose, I'm getting sweet, herbal, might sound really funny, but a kind of rusty aroma. Uh, as a son of a boiler maker growing up, having to work with dad for so many years, welding and stuff like that, I'd kind of get that smell, but not in a bad way to taste. sweet but more like a bittersweet flavor it's very herbal for me it's it's kind of vegetal a little bit earthy you could even say definitely an acquired taste but a good one um, put it up against something like Fernet Branca which I love and we did a Fernet Branca video I'll leave the link at the end it's a lot easier to drink it's not as bitter it's very well balanced on the sweeter side though and it just leaves that really nice sort of lingering bitterness at the end. It's a nice, smooth, bitter sort of finish. And I kind of tend to get a little bit of a, like a light espresso in there as well. I think it's one of those types of liqueurs, a lot like Campari Inferno, that you probably have to drink them a few times to get used to them. But this would be one of the easier ones uh, to, to get sort of hooked on. How would I drink this? I love this chilled in, in just like a tulip glass or a, a snifter. I love it in, believe it or not, a chinna daiquiri. I love it in a chinna sour. So it works really, really well with cocktails. Works perfectly in a chinna flip uh, with egg, a whole egg, incredible as well. I've substituted it uh, in a Negroni instead of the Campari, absolutely amazing, and then even an Americano. Guys, you need to really go out and try this. It's not expensive, 16.5% ABV, uh, the alcohol percentage. I definitely give it a thumbs up. Guys, please like, subscribe. I'm thinking of doing a video, trying maybe four or five different Amaros side by side. If you think so, give us a bit of a comment below. See you again soon, guys, on Let's Talk Drinks.